Hello, my name is Raul Quinones, and today I'm presenting securing autonomous vehicles with robust physical invariants. Autonomous vehicles include aerial, sea, and ground vehicles. Most people usually tend to associate them with uh, ground vehicles, but it also has a wide range of vehicles. Their automation range from 0 to 5, with 0 being absolutely no automation, and 5, it doesn't need any human interaction. Autonomous vehicles assess their environment with a variety of sensors. The current problem that we're facing now is that uh, these autonomous vehicles relied on their sensors and these sensors are not uh, foolproof. They can be spoofed, they can be manipulated, as we can see in these news articles. So ABS are vulnerable to sensor targeted attacks, mainly because of their reliance on uh, sensor information. But also sensors are susceptible to GPS spoofing and transduction attack that manipulates these physical signals. There has been plenty of research that has explored these vulnerabilities in cameras, lighters, radars, IMUs, and GPS. When it comes to transduction attack, these sensors measure uh, the actual analog signals on the real world. It could be magnetic, optical, or acoustic in order to make sense of the world, but these signals can actually be manipulated by an attacker by injecting out-of-bound signals. When it comes to GPS spoofing, if a vehicle or a device is getting GPS signal from different satellites that it's weak, but it's also getting a spoof signal that is actually stronger, it's going to believe that it's at a different location despite getting information from these satellites. So the main insights of our work is that we're introducing SAVIOR, which stands for Securing Autonomous Vehicles with Robust Physical Invariants, and it's a framework that we are contributing to the following four points. Number one, we use well-known uh, nonlinear models to actually describe the behavior of ground and area vehicles. We introduce a strong attacker that is able to attack the vehicles with uh, stealthy attacks. We implement a cumulative sum algorithm that basically improves detection of performance over previous uh, approaches. And then finally, we implement this into two actual hardware devices, uh, a real drone and a real vehicle. When it comes to sensors and movement variables, the drone mainly interacts with three axes. That would be X, Y, and Z, and the measurements that you would get would be roll, pitch, and jaw. The main sensors that we care about would be the accelerometer, gyroscope, magnetometer, and GPS. When it comes to the ground vehicle, the two main axes that it interacts with is the pitch and the yaw, that is the vertical movement and also the horizontal movement along its own axis. The main sensors that we care about would be the line data, the angle, the position, and also the speed. Here this graph it illustrates how it interacts with the main axis. This would be the drone, this would be the ground vehicle. When it comes to describing the behavior of these vehicles, we actually are using nonlinear models to describe them. And as we can see over here, this would be the 12 differential equations for the uh, dynamics of a quadcopter, and this would be the equations to describe the behavior of the ground vehicle. The reason why we're using nonlinear models is because we already have the mathematical models that actually describe the system. It's just in the same way that we have the mathematical models that describe how an apple falls towards the ground, there's no need to actually implement machine learning since we already have a good foundation of how these systems behave. When it comes to the design of our savior algorithm that we're in introducing here, it basically consists of mainly four parts. Number one, we have an online sensor preprocessing because the information that we're getting from the sensors needs to be changed into a more readable form. We have an offline preprocessing stage where we use the models previously discussed to gain and learn the physical invariance of the system. We have an online stage where we predict measurements and compare observed values to make sure that we are not being attacked. And then we actually have an anomaly detection system that will raise an alarm if um, an anomaly is persistent in the system. When it comes to the online stage, we actually are using an extended common filter that is used to predict the physical behavior and estimate the unknown parameters from the noisy inputs of the different sensors. So this algorithm is mainly divided into two routines. Number one is the prediction in which we actually get the measurements from the previous uh, uh, 
time and then what we do is that we use that to calculate and estimate what would be the next uh, pre the next state of the device because measurements are not always 100% accurate this also has a second stage that is a correction stage in which ca we calculate the common gain that is used to decide how much of the measurement or the prediction we actually are confident that it's correct. So this prediction, it's gonna be compared against the actual values that we're getting from the device in real time. As for the anomaly detection, as I mentioned earlier, we're using a custom algorithm. And what we are doing here is basically we're calculating the residuals between the two measurements, the measurement that we're getting from the system and also the measurement that we are getting from our estimated state. So what we do is we compare those two measurements and then we keep track of the anomalies over time. That is, if the difference is greater than or uh, observe normal, normal observe uh, behavior of the device, then we keep accumulating them. So that if this change is consistent and it goes over a threshold that we gain from observing normal behavior, we can say that the system is under attack. When it comes to the implementation, this is the specifics of the aerial vehicle, but it's basically the same thing for the ground vehicle. So both controllers follow and publish a subscribe architecture in which the modules communicate with each other by publishing topics and subscribing to those topics. The main topics of interest for this example would be the sensor combined, GP, a vehicle GPS position, and vehicle magnetometer. So the anomaly detector is situated right here at this location where it gets the information, it pre-processes it, it gives it to the extended common filter, it, break, it estimates a uh, prediction, it compares it with real values, and then it takes a look at uh, how those values are compared against the actual measurements. When it comes to the evaluation, we implemented this into the Intel Aero Rate of Flight drone and uh, a custom build card that we had at the lab it's uh, running a uh, raw kinetic cane. So on the specific example, I'm gonna go ahead and play this video that shows how the attack uh, is uh, performed on the car. As we can see over here on the top right hand, we can see the Kusum algorithm, the car is just following the line. And basically we're gonna go ahead and inject an uh, image inside of the car to actually go ahead and diverge the car. The custom algorithm is able to detect those uh, broad movements and it was able to detect it. We reset it and then it's able to detect it again because the attack is consistent. When it comes to the drone, this is an example of one of the attacks that we were able to perform on the GPS. So basically this is the flight starting. This is where we start the attack and this is the final destination of the drone. What we ended up doing, we fake a GPS signal that basically there's a period of a GPS timeout. Once a GPS timeout happens, it starts believing the wrong information of the GPS and it starts correcting. But the issue is that what it starts correcting is that uh, basically it never moved. The signal was spoof and the device ends up at a different location right over here. And we can see here how basically the attack is being detected here at time 50 seconds. So the attack is launched here. As you can see, the abrupt moment on the x-axis and the abrupt moment on the y-axis. And then basically this is the Kusum algorithm actually saying that there has been an attack. Because we have to have a baseline to compare our method in order to make sure that we're improving the state of the art, we decided to compare this with um, choice uh, algorithm as a baseline because they that was the state of the art at the time of this uh, work. Because our model uses nonlinear uh, models, we are calling ourselves NLC right here. And because Choi uses linear models and time windows, we're calling their approach LTW. So as we can see over here, this would be how the sensor measurements are able to compare against both of them. The black would be the nonlinear and the yellow would be the linear. So as you can see, the black is able to follow the process along a little bit better. When it comes to ROC and detection time, we can also see that our methods are able to detect attacks faster and have less amount of um, false positive rate and be able to attack, detect most of the attacks. The same thing happens on the ground vehicle where we can see that the orange line would be the baseline and our implementation would be the blue line.
When it comes to stealthy attacks, what we wanted to do, we wanted to create a powerful attacker that is able to attack the system in a way that he doesn't, he remains undetected and basically try to affect the system as much as possible. When it comes to stealthy attacks, uh, we uh, basically found out that our approach is able to discourage these types of attacks in a way that the system doesn't get affected as much because of the custom algorithm that keeps track of all those discrepancies against a time window algorithm that with smaller attacks it would take longer to detect. And as we can see over here at the bottom, this is about sensors, so we are able to, once the attack is launched, we're able to stay within the boundaries longer. And then this attack is based on position, so the attack is it's able to manipulate the position less with our method than we use and use linear models. When it comes to the overhead of our system, the drone uh, has an average overhead of 5.4% and on the ground vehicle, an average overhead of 2.5%. And this is CPU utilization. So to conclude, the main uh, takeaways from our approach is that we're using uh, well-known physical invariants, we're using nonlinear models, and we use a system identification offline. Uh, finally, we use a custom algorithm to keep track of these discrepancies, and we evaluate the effectiveness of stealthy attacks. So our code, it's available right here, and also we have some more videos. This is the contact information of our team and uh, thank you very much for coming to this talk and if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them at the appropriate time.